Ed Parker. Now that you're sitting down, you're very welcome uh, to the program. We're going to talk about karate for a moment. How did you get into it? Uh, well, I'm from Honolulu, and my father was quite a religious man. And to honor him, I <clears throat> was asked often by my street colleagues to do a, a job somewhere, pulling up, blowing up a safe or things of that nature, and to tell them, no, I had to do it physically, and that's why I started with this. Mm. Um, what was your parents' attitude to this kind of thing? Well, my parents, uh, he was not a poster, he was a great athlete himself. And he felt that we had the, a right to defend ourselves. What's the difference between Kenpo Karate and any other kind of karate? Well, I would say that Kenpo is the most updated form of karate that's geared for the present environment that we live in. Why so? Well, that which we do is practical, it's not classical method that you oftentimes see which would not work on our streets today. The people we saw uh, demonstrating it at the beginning, I mean, how skilled are they? Where do they uh, find themselves on, on the uh, hierarchy of, of They're karate? They're black but I would say that in Ireland, Ireland is pre predominantly Kempo, more than any other country. Yeah. How long ago since you brought Kempo to Ireland? Well, it was, well, it was one of my uh, black belts years ago named John Maxwell, who came here to go to college. And he was the one that started. So we have a big, big faction. Yeah, how many practitioners in Ireland? <sighs> We have some of the audience there. Right? They were the one. Would you say six, seven thousand? Yeah, six, About, seven thousand people. I would say that. Yeah, the people who are doing that demonstration, a lot of them look quite slight. I mean, you're beefy enough, uh, Ed, but uh, I'm a victim of my taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to be heavy to do this. No, that, no, you don't. No. And there's a young woman there, and she looked well able to take care of herself. Yeah. Well, you know, one of my favorite friends was Bruce Lee. It was I who got Bruce into the movie industry because when I saw him move, he was, he was a very slight built guy. But when he hit, he hit like a mule. You know? and that's because he was able to learn how to bring all faculties together at a, at a specific point in time. Do people go around chopping up uh, concrete blocks and things like no, that? No, not really. Broads and bricks do not attack people. However, when the wives throw it, that's when it's used. <laughs> So, so this is all about self-defense, really. Yes, it is, and you know, a lot of you can see a difference between my knuckles and my right hand. And people say, if you don't board, break boards and bricks, why do you develop it? Well, that you never know when you meet up against a hostile tree. <laughs> that, that's a huge <laughs> hand compared to the other ones. That's the, your right hand is the one that does the business. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, tell me about. Hollywood. I mean, Bruce Lee is part of Hollywood, but Elvis too, I suppose. How did you meet him? Well, I met Elvis in 1960. I was putting on a karate demonstration. He was doing a picture there with Tuesday Walls called Wild in the Country. Uh, he happened to be residing at the very hotel I put for the demonstration. And lo and behold, after the demonstration was over, he came up with his entourage and said, I don't think you know me, but my name is Elvis Presley. I thought, well, what a humble guy he was. And then when he found out that I was from Hawaii, we became even closer. Because he loved the islands, and he knew that the fans there loved him, but they didn't bother him. Mm. Of course, show us, show us that ring which uh, Elvis <laughs> has given you. Yeah, if you lift it up just a little higher, we'll, we'll see it there. And that's uh, beautiful. You see, I, I have a number of rings, but unless Barney Coleman and all of them hung around me, and shape. I, I wouldn't wear it. <laughs> How much of uh, Elvis did you see towards the end? Quite a few. Uh, I mean, we spent a lot of time together. Yeah. Quite a few days. And do you know really what happened to him in the end? Well, you know, it was a hard situation. He, you take enough, uh, you get enough uh, uh, bites from a rattlesnake and you become immune. Likewise, uh, he takes these controls, but each and every time he took it, he got immune to it, so you have to take something even uh, heavier than he normally did. And there were a number of times I saw the doctor shoot him with, with some things, and I literally had to put him on my shoulder to take him a bit. He'd get wound up, and that's the only way we could get him down. There were all sorts of stories afterwards uh, that he was into very young girls, that he was uh, into... Yeah, I'm not sure. No, I'll tell you an example. Um, I had a long conversation with Elvis's father after he had died. I said, Mr. Preston, a uh, number of the fans would like me to write a book on Elvis. Could I get your permission? He said, well, I can't tell you yes, and I can't tell you no. But I know if you did, you'd treat my son kindly. He 
said, I can tell you this. My son was a better man than me because when he found out that a girl that he was interested in was married, he said, he laid off. He said, I cannot tell you that of myself. So that tells you something about that. That's about Elvis. Um, nowadays, there are all sorts of stories of sightings of Elvis, that he's alive, that he pulled this stunt in order to live a private life, which he couldn't live. I mean, do you find those offensive? Very offensive, because there's a time at his home where I had the privilege of touching his body for at least 20 to 25 minutes. He just, he and I were alone. He in the coffin. And that was his body. No one can tell me anything. It's a terrible sad way for him to end. I mean, he was marvelously rich. He was marvelously talented. Uh, his fans, unlike many other uh, artists, they stayed with him. I mean, his fans, some of them were, oh, I suppose, well into their 60s. That's and still, true. they loved Elvis Presley. And it, uh, can, can you ever put forward a theory as to, to what well, critically went wrong? Uh, in, in terms of his death, you mean? Just in terms of the, the going to seed. I mean, was he surrounded? Like Something in their faith. They don't have my last name, so you'll never know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, people, can they defend themselves right into sort of old age, if necessary, with this, with this skill? No doubt. Yeah. I should ask you why you're... No, a brown belt of this. And it's open to everyone. And we're having a great support by all the members here for the temple uh, system. Okay, it's exciting stuff. And Ed, thank you very much for coming along and thank showing you. us. Thank you. Thank you, Ed Parker.